Hello and welcome to the Monday, June 10th, 2024 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Well, on Friday, we got the details regarding an interesting PHP vulnerability that uh, PHP patched the day before. I don't see an official advisory from PHP yet regarding this vulnerability. Orange Tsai, the Taiwanese researcher, has originally published about this vulnerability and now Watchtower Labs has released additional details, including fairly straightforward and simple to exploit proof of concept exploits. We also already see some scans taking advantage of this vulnerability as of this weekend. The vulnerability itself is quite straightforward. It is really a Unicode problem, so you're only vulnerable if you're running in the Japanese or Chinese locale. In order to be vulnerable, you also need to run PHP in CGI mode. So if you're running it as a module in Apache, for example, then you're not vulnerable. The problem is how command line arguments are being passed to php.exe if it's running in CGI, which typically is in Windows, which is you know, why we have here php.exe playing a role. The web server will typically escape dashes that are being passed as command line arguments. Now, of course, does prevent the injection of command line arguments that can in turn be used to execute code. However, there is sort of an interesting Unicode problem here. There is a soft hyphen. It's actually still sort of one of those extended ASCII codes, alpha delta, so it's still part of the one byte Unicode codes. And uh, PHP does something called best fit mapping, where if this code, like not on the command line, doesn't really make sense, it does map it into the closest with respect to the look and functionality ASCII code, and that's here the dash. So it's a typical mistake where you first do some kind of input validation or in escaping, that's what the web server does, and then you actually modify the data, and then you pass or execute the command, and that exactly leads to the command injection here. The possible exploitation that Watchtower suggests here is that you basically add an option for a prepend file that allows you to basically just execute additional code before the actual PHP script is loaded. And then that prepend file, well, is just the payload of the post request. So relatively straightforward exploitation, Orange Tsai suggests that other locales may be vulnerable as well. Hasn't been verified yet. I definitely highly recommend that you upgrade if you are running PHP in CGI mode. If you're not running in CGI mode, and if you're not running like the Japanese and Chinese uh, locale, then maybe you have a little bit more time, but uh, definitely something that you do want to apply uh, relatively soon. But well, it's not just PHP that likes to execute arbitrary code, it's also Python. We do have a vulnerability in PyTorch. PyTorch is a machine learning framework and it does offer an RPC framework that allows you to distribute the learning process. Of course, with machine learning often being very compute intense, by distributing it across multiple systems, you can speed up the learning process. And that's exactly what this distributed RPC framework is doing in PyTorch. The problem is that it essentially executes arbitrary Python code. And with that, once an attacker is able to submit commands to this RPC endpoint, they're essentially able to do whatever that uh, PyTorch master node is able to execute on the affected system. There doesn't appear to be any real authentication in play here, so definitely firewall rules are your best friend, and of course, update to the latest version of PyTorch. 
And a group of Israeli researchers uh, took yet another look at the problem of malicious Visual Studio code extensions and uh, themes. This has been an ongoing problem and has been flying a little bit under the radar in the entire supply chain debate. There is a lot of discussion usually about libraries and dependencies and such, but uh, these uh, plugins and extensions uh, to IDEs like Visual Studio Code are often forgotten. Now, what these researchers did is um, maybe crossing a little bit the line here from an ethics point of view, but I think they sort of uh, state like you know, close to what I would consider acceptable. They essentially impersonated a very popular theme. The theme is called Dracula and it's using the moniker Dracula Official on the Visual Studio Code uh, Marketplace. The fake extension, or the fake theme really, uh, that these researchers published was just called Dracula instead of Dracula Official. And they even registered a domain name, DraculaTheme.com, in order to become a verified publisher on Visual Studio Code Marketplace. Now, when you downloaded the Dracula theme via the unofficial uh, site, uh, you got essentially the same code as from the official one with one small addition in that the fake version did send an HTTPS post request to the researcher's website, including some basic information about the system the extension was installed on. That allowed them, of course, to not only count how often it was installed, but also take a look at who installed it. A total of uh, 100 different organizations did install the particular malicious theme, some of them big name brand companies, according to the researchers. Endpoint detection response did not detect uh, the modification here. And there are a large number of themes that actually have similar suspicious uh, behavior. Of course, many of them are probably doing nothing uh, bad. So for example, uh, there are 8,161 that communicate with hard-coded IP addresses and over a thousand that are running unknown executables and so on. Others, of course, are just uh, pulling a code from a GitHub repos, which uh, could also be changed at any time. So probably be aware of this and uh, talk to your developers, make sure that they are aware of the risk and are careful as they are installing extensions and themes for their favorite ID. And again, this is not just a VS Code issue. Well, that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.